Morning. Thank you for joining us online at Heartland Community Church. Hope you enjoy the service. John 13, 34. Good morning. My name is Pastor Chad Edelman. I am the pastor here at Harlan Community Church. And uh, thank you for joining our online service today. This morning I was going to do our next week in uh, the series we're in. The Bible doesn't say that. But I uh, was convicted to preach a different sermon today. I received an email from Tim Purcell, our district superintendent this week. Um, and he said the following message. He said, by now you've read the stories and have probably watched the horrifying video of the death of George Floyd, which took place in Minneapolis, as awful as it was. It was just the most recent in a long string of violent injustices. 
towards people of color in our country lately. As a shepherd and spiritual leader, I hope this has caused you to grieve deeply and has motivated you to speak out on behalf of the marginalized and the disadvantaged. I hope that you are ready to embrace the reality that the sin of racism hasn't gone away and it won't go away until God's people insist on justice. And I hope that you understand that we evangelical Christians who fight for the rights of the unborn can't truly call ourselves pro-life until we value and stand up for all life. Martin Luther King framed the issue well many years ago. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Now, I had not seen the video at this time of George Floyd. So I searched it and I watched it. And if you've seen it, it's hard to watch. It's not something I want children to see. Or I, uh, I was gonna put it on this video today, actually. But it's, it's too horrific, it's too, I just couldn't do it. But you should see it if you haven't. Because it's something that each of us need to see. We need to open our eyes to the racial injustice that is happening every day in this country. So I'll post a link to the video or just search George Floyd and there's plenty of them out there and watch for yourself. But after watching that, there's no justification. There's no excuse and no denying. And in my own opinion, this is a live video of a black man being murdered in the street by a white police officer. Maybe that sounds extreme. Maybe you don't like hearing your pastor talk this way. But if you watch the video and you could tell me something different, I would love to hear it. Mr. Floyd is arrested. He's detained, handcuffed, laid on the ground beside a car. He's not fighting. And the officer has his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck. Mr. Floyd is pleading for his life, begging for his life. He says, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And if you watch the video, you may feel the same way because it'll take your breath away to see this extreme act happen in broad daylight in front of so many people, bystanders. You can hear in the video, asking the officer to get off his neck, seeing that he can't breathe, seeing that he's killing this man. But the officer with his hand in his pocket, kneeling on this man's neck, doesn't stop. He stays there for five minutes until Mr. Floyd is unconscious and then he passes away right there on the street before the paramedics even get there. How can something like this happen? It's so obvious the officers were at fault. They were fired immediately that day. And that never happens. Usually there's a long drawn out process to that, a huge investigation, but that didn't happen here. It was so obvious that they were in the wrong. This should cause us to pause that they were fired so abruptly. And there's no doubt their actions were violent and deadly and they need to be held accountable. After watching this video more times than I should have, I was very convicted to address this evil in our society even though I don't know how to start or where to start. I was just angry. We have a diverse congregation and I believe we do love everyone and we accept everyone here at Heartland. And we do reach out to people and um, I believe that we're, we're doing good things. We're doing good things here. But um, I know that we can do more. I know there's something else that we can do um, as a church, as a family. The thing that stuck out to me, um, besides the obvious mistreatment and murder of this man was um, there were three other officers that were standing over Mr. Floyd uh, during this time while the, the first officer had his knee on his neck and they didn't say anything. They didn't do anything. They were silent. And I was thinking, is that me? Is that us? 
seeing these things happen, knowing that they're happening, but choosing to stay silent about them. And after stopping and praying, uh, this gut-wrenching truth came to light that I was one of those officers. I do stay silent. I do turn a blind eye. I see the stories on social media, on TV. Um, <clears throat> I often pray for those involved, but I, I don't do anything. I don't um, look for a way that I can make a change. And I need to change that for myself. So one of the things I knew I had to do um, that following day, I saw there was a rally um, being held in Waterloo where we could all unite. And uh, people of all races, all nationalities, all different beliefs, just standing in unity and love and hope um, to stand out against this injustice against this uh, this evil and it was a small step and more needs to be done and uh, we're going to find ways to make sure that we're involved in this to be part of the change that we want to see and i don't have all the answers but i do know this i know we can do more i know we can do more we can look for opportunities we can contact people that are fighting this evil every day we can join them we can do more. We can't turn a blind eye anymore to stories like that of George Floyd. We are choosing not to love. God makes it very clear throughout the Bible. Oppression, inequality, favoritism towards a person or a group of people based on their skin color, nationality, gender, beliefs is unacceptable. And it is a sin. It is evil and must be addressed. So today we're gonna to confront the sin of racism in our communities, our state, nation, our world. How we as the church, the representatives of Jesus in this temporary world, cannot stand idly by and allow this type of behavior to happen. I know it's not a soft and comfortable sermon this morning. It's a difficult topic. And it's not talked about in church that often, although it should be. We claim here at Heartland to be a dangerous church that is willing to risk everything we have to reach anyone we can. Our mission is to confront evil and injustice in our community, break strongholds of the enemy, to offer hope and light to those who are trapped in darkness. And we do this through the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit that lives in and through us, a gift given to us by God the sacrifice of his son on the cross. A gift we didn't earn and we don't deserve. A gift we must offer to others. We cannot call ourselves the light of the world. If those who need us most cannot see us, cannot hear us. To quote Martin Luther King again, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. And I think this is a great advice and a great message for the church. Martin Luther King Jr. is a man I have deep respect for, for many, or for many reasons. The first is the way you love people. If you listen to his sermons and you read his many famous quotes, he wasn't dividing people in an attempt to call out racial injustice. He didn't have an us versus them mindset. He simply called out and shined a light on evil, on sinful behavior. His dream for all mankind was unity. He wanted people of all nations, race, genders, etc., to be equal and to be treated the same. And it reminds me of the same way Jesus lived. He wanted that same thing, unity among the people. John 13, 34 and 35. Jesus says a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Three times in that short scripture, the most powerful scripture, the biggest command Jesus gives to his church, love God, love others. 
Not once, not twice, but three times. This is how the church is to live in this temporary world. This is how we treat people, all people, with love and compassion, with grace and mercy, with forgiveness and reconciliation. As I have loved you, that's what Jesus gives us as a foundation and reference point to how we treat others. We love each other like Jesus loved us. So who does Jesus love? Well, let's look at Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you look through scripture, Jesus didn't show favoritism towards anyone. And actually went after those who were mistreated and oppressed by society. He gave a voice to those who didn't have a voice. And that is what we are called to do as his church. That is what it looks like to reflect the love of Jesus in this world. We can stand up and speak out for people affected by violence and injustice. We can peacefully protest, push for laws to protect people from senseless brutality, and show up in the lives of those who feel we have turned our back on them. Here's what this doesn't look like. We are not called to violence, to rioting, to burning down buildings, to breaking windows and stealing. Although we hate the situation, and we do, and the sin of racism, we cannot spread the violence and hate because that won't solve anything. We are called to be peacekeepers and stand between the lines. We are called to show love and light in situations filled with vengeance and darkness. We can start by speaking out against the unfair and devastating treatment of others. We can stop avoiding tough conversations and shed light on things that we have tolerated for far too long as normal in our society. Not everyone will listen and we may lose friends or family members that feel there is no reason to get involved, but nothing worth having comes easy. Some of these things are worth fighting for. And Jesus spent his time on earth as an example of this. He confronted traditions and false teachers. He gave his life to defend and save people. They were treated like second class citizens. I know because I was one of them. You know because you were one of them. Lost in your sin, doing what you wanted, trapped in darkness and a cycle of destruction. When Jesus came and you experienced him in your life and you gave your life to him. Once controlled by our sinful nature and blinded by the lies of this temporary world and the enemy. But he came into that dark, desperate place to show us the way out. We need to go into those same places. The same places for others, for people, for all people. I want us to be the light of the world. The light the world needs right now. Let's show the love of Christ to everyone we encounter. Let's speak and stand up for those that feel their voices have been silenced. Let's love one another the way Jesus loves us. One last quote from uh, Martin Luther King. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only love can do that. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Now is the time for the church to shine. The light of love of Jesus in places consumed by darkness and hate. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your message. Thank you for convicting me, Lord, that I was one of those, like the officer, standing silently by watching, not saying anything not getting involved. I'm sure I was praying that there would be peace. I was praying that the violence would end, but I was not putting myself into that situation. I was not offering help. I was not trying to be part of the solution, which made me part of the problem. I pray that we can all see where we fall in light of that. Are we watching? Are we silent? Is there something we can do? 
I guarantee there is. We need to change. We can't stand back and watch from the sidelines. We have to get into this game. Defend those who feel like they don't have a voice. Fight for those who are being oppressed. Fight against the sin of racism and injustice in this country, in this nation, in this world. Lord, please give us the strength to be the church that you have called us to be. We give you all the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. Have an awesome week.